It's always good being with you, family. And thank you all for joining. Uh, as we uh, await the arrival of Sister Shannon Lane today, uh, I want to talk a little bit about uh, Women's History Month. I want to talk a little bit about Black resistance. And of course, as soon as she pops up, I'm going to shut my mouth and I'm going to give her the stage because what one thing we try to do with Harlem Liberation School we try to model the things that we think are important for our people to see, for other activists to see and other organizers to see. And one of those very important principles is no one to get on stage and no one to get off stage. Just because I founded an organization or you created an organization and we have a meeting, that doesn't mean you or I need to dominate the whole meeting. <laughs> you know, it, you, you share the stage. And I think sometimes leaders should be, should fall back and allow their organization to move without them always having to be in the forefront. Because what that does is it makes your organization a charismatically led organization. What that does is it means that when you die, get sick, can't come in, go to jail or whatever, your organization falls right? Because your organization was only built upon you being present. So at Harlem Liberation School, we tried to challenge that model so that when we come out, you're not going to hear me talking for a whole hour, family, just not. If I'm doing a presentation, you will, but it's, it's really setting the stage for others to present. And what we do is give them the alley-oop so they could dunk it. It's that type of a uh, framework, I think, that we're finding it's going to be much more successful than the organizations of old that were based on some good looking, well spoken, charismatic brother or sister leading it. That doesn't, it doesn't fly anymore. And if we studied and appreciated this sister, who I'm going to point her out, I don't know if you see my arrow, but she's between, she's one, two, three. Or if you go to the bottom row, starting at the right, Three people in one, two, three. Sister Ella Baker showed us the way. She showed us a way of organizing that's much more effective, not charismatically driven, driven by policy, driven by making sure everybody knows how to organize, knows the basics of organizing, and that when they go to cities, they don't go there to dominate or tell the people what to do. They train the indigenous leadership. And that leadership owns its own community. And they now know how to organize and they can teach that. And it goes on and on. Now, SNCC can now go somewhere else <coughs> and teach that community how to organize, right? Today, uh, we are um, pleased to have, still waiting for them to come on, uh, members of the Y Accountability Organization. And... In the meantime, it's very important, family, that you know what Harlem Liberation School got up its sleeve, what it's up to next. Upcoming events, family. Check it. Trash man didn't get my trash today. Oh, why? Because they want more pay. That's what makes the world go round. I'm not doing that. In Black Power family, it's your Harlem educator, author, and activist, the Black Liberation Coach, Brother I.J. Taimba. I want to remind everyone that uh, you can see our show at uh, Black Liberation or Harlem Liberation School online, and the platforms uh, that you will see these shows on would be my Facebook page, and it would be uh, Periscope through Instagram. Thank you again for joining us at the place 
where we give foundational black political education. We give we bring Africana studies to the hood in a way that is accessible, not over anyone's head. And uh, we appreciate all your support. Peace. All right. All right, family, we had a, a little bit of technical difficulties. Sister Shannon has been trying to get in and she's been having difficulty. So we're going to be patient with our sister. In the meantime, we want to talk about uh, some of the work they do. Her organization is Why Accountability. And Why Accountability is a grassroots community organization led by our sisters, which is very fitting given that everybody's celebrating Women's History Month, which is something that, of course, we should be doing all the time. And um, they bang on the police. Yesterday we did a live, we talked about why protesting is such an important and fundamental uh, aspect of black resistance. And we said that when people protest, they educate the community on important issues and strategies and tactics. They inspire the community that might live in fear, they help them to overcome their fear and their ignorance. Of course, immediately speaking, they challenge sites of power. And when it's done effectively and properly, they force these sites of power to grant concessions, right? And so they do a really a wonderful job. I was just telling the sister yesterday that I, I really respect the work they do. And what I hope will happen at the end of this uh, broadcast is that some of you will see the work they do and you will decide to reach out to them and uh, to connect with them to support them, and to even join the organization. All right, um, let's see if we have any comments. Okay. Okay, Shannon, <laughs> Shannon said you need to link. Yeah, I sent it to you, Sister Shannon. We got uh, Sister Queen Low Glenn says, Wakusu, we in the building, that's what's up. That the one true love, baby girl, Brenda says, Wakusu to the family. Very good, glad to see all of you. And I just want to make sure, okay. All right, the link is there. All right. I'm pretty sure we're gonna see our sister very shortly. Hold on. Okay. She's in bed. Okay. Well, well, well. What do we have here? Brothers and sisters. I'm very pleased to uh, uh, introduce a sister that, as we say, really needs no introduction because uh, she does some really, really wonderful work as relates to uh, community, grassroots community organizing. Community organizing at the grassroots level, not in the ivory tower, not distant, disconnected from the people. Uh, they have a very strong, solid analysis. They're very consistent and they're banging on the, the corrupt and racist NYPD, New York City Police Department, and even engaging other issues. I know that they've done some food, giving out some food to the people. They do some what we would call political education in the community. They are what you might say are in the tradition of some of our SNCC type organizations out there teaching people how to organize, modeling for people how to organize, banging on the system and hopefully producing generations of future activists and organizers. Brothers and sisters, I introduce to you the one and the only, our sister, Shannon Elaine. Sister Shannon, how you be? How you doing, sis? Can, um... Good afternoon. Nice to see you, like Good the Good afternoon. Shirt. Thank you. Nice, nice. Got the logo on there. Very nice. How are you feeling today? Right. I'm feeling pretty good. I don't call it, I don't call it merch. Merch is for the streets. People that are selling stuff online, that's not merch. It's an online store. Merch is for the streets. So it's right. just our t-shirt and I say it talks without talking. Mm -hmm. Nice. Very nice. Um, Sister Shannon Elaine. You know, whenever I have a platform, I'm always going to make it my business to have certain people have a presence on it because I think their presence is important to the community. Why accountability would be one of those organizations, you know, because I think I, I value the work that you all do. 
And I want to get into, I want to put up a few things as we talk. I will have a ticker on the bottom family that's giving you a quick breakdown of why accountability. But while you look at that, Sister Shannon, could you give us your breakdown? If you were to summarize what why accountability is, what it stands for, what it tries to do, how would you frame that? Thank you for asking. And the crawl that you have across the screen, I think is really, really good because what it shows is our uh, political development as an organization also, right? So the way I would describe Bronx Sites for NYPD accountability, known as Y accountability in this moment is a black liberationist, reparationist uh, organization that does the work of relieving people, black people, Africans in particular, from operational terrorism of the police, particularly the New York City Police Department, right? We're not a national organization. However, we have moved in a national way where the situation calls for it, but we are micro focused on uh, the NYPD in New York City. So through our work, around operational terrorism, some people call it police brutality. Uh, we've developed politically, we've developed as Africans, and that work has led us to other areas that are important to foster our independence as African people, our everyday uh, African experience. And hopefully it will remove the condemnation that our future generations will be subject to if we don't do this work. Thank you for that, Sister Shannon. Now, a lot of people watching are going to want to know what exactly are the forces or circumstances that led you and those who work with you to create the organization Why Accountability? So I will tell everyone, and I think your listeners can definitely relate to this experience, right? So, you know, I'm at home just like everybody else. And just to give a 10 second background, I'm born and raised in New York City. I uh, went to high school in Harlem. I'm a Brooklyn person. So I had the benefit of being in proximity in Harlem to some of our, you know, master teachers, master scholars, Dr. Leonard Jeffries, Dr. Khalid Muhammad. You know, these folks were, you know, visible and around at that time uh, in the late 80s and early 90s. So I wasn't completely you know, bereft of any type of black power knowledge or, you know, consciousness in that way, but was it being uh, utilized? No, not really, right? We knew what racism is, white supremacy is, but not exactly how to move in an organized manner. So I'm, you know, reading the newspaper like everybody else in July of 2014, and there's an article that has a link to a video and that video is Eric Garner being choked to death by um, the NYPD in Staten Island on um, Victory and Bay Street on July 17th of 2014. And similarly to the outrage we feel as African people to Sean Bell, um, <clears throat> my earliest memories of um, an incident of a police murder in our people was Eleanor Bumpers. I was a very small kid. So watching this on TV and, and watching Eric Garner, I think the thing for me was his hand being extended. And I'm saying this with my eyes closed because it, 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 it it's crazy. It's really crazy. His hand being extended pleading with someone, anybody to help him. And that, that, I call that what I tell people is my fuck this shit moment, right? It's like, all right, I know about racism. I know it exists, but uh-uh, but, this is not, just having this knowledge is, is not cutting it. It's, it's not cutting it because by this point, it's Patrick Doris, Sean Bell, Eleanor Bumpers, um, just so many people, Usmani Zango, you know, Muhammad Ba, so many people at that point. And I'm saying uh, just recently, right before that, Ramali Graham too, it, it was too much. 
And we have this tool, right? This platform that you and I are on right now and that folks are listening to right now. And everyone was on Facebook talking about it. I mean, and I ended up on a thread, which I don't even know if we were calling it threads then. And folks were discussing Eric Garner and the, and Eric Garner's murder by NYPD. And the comments went on for hours. There could have been dozens of people in this particular thread typing away with different viewpoints and opinions and mandates around what we need to do as black people. People were getting mad at each other, blocking each other, cursing each other out, uh, what I like to call, uh, you know, pissing contests. Uh, there's another way to put that, but I won't do that. Um, and engaging in these pissing contests. And at some point, someone in the room in that thread said, listen, let's stop all of this talking. When do you want to meet? Let's meet up and do something about it. And then someone else said, okay, I have space. And someone else said, okay, that's right. Let's do it. And this is all on an open thread and a date, time and location got set up in order for all of the people in this Facebook uh, comment thread around what to do about police brutality would meet up. And that date, time, and location was set. And out of all of those dozens and dozens of people commenting, and I would have to say most of them were in New York City, right? Only eight people showed up, myself included. And those eight people sat down and thought about how could we actively, actively, not just chatter, right? Because you're on the internet, you know, what people call keyboard warriors or armchair revolutionaries, whatever. What could we actively do in order to prevent something like this from happening in the Bronx? Because it ended up being a Bronx group of people that were willing to come to the Bronx to meet up to talk to, to devise a plan to address police brutality, at least in the Bronx. We knew, you know, and what I learned from you, brother RJ, is that this kind of sweeping thing may not happen, but how could we cre uh, create a better control of our lives and livelihoods in real time, at least in the Bronx? Mm -hmm. And that's how the organization was formed. Now, we didn't know what the hell we were gonna do. Like, okay, what do we do? We're here now. We're looking at each other, getting familiar with one another because now we're agreeing to move in an organized way. We're agreeing to this amongst ourselves, right? So what are we gonna do? And how does our experience and our expertise and our knowledge around the landscape of New York City provide that we actually do something about it. So one of our first efforts was to attend police precinct council meetings. Now we're talking about 2014. Now just days after our organization was formed, or at least the commitment to one another before we even had a name yet, Mike Brown was murdered. So it's like, uh-oh, we jumped on this at the right time because this is looking like a powder keg. And we decided to attend police precinct meetings because that was a direct confrontation to police conduct, right? Um, probably in your program, I'll offer commentary around what's going on today, nearly seven years later, which is much different from what was going on in 2014. But we decided at minimum to address police upfront, in your face, in their house on a monthly basis because these precinct council meetings, and these are not community board meetings, I wanna make that clear to your listeners, the police department have precinct community councils where the community is invited, yeah to come in and address whatever issues and concerns that they have within their environment. And attending those meetings, what we found was no one was addressing these precinct commanders around brutality occurring within their command, within their sector. 
And this is what we did in the beginning. Now we're talking August going forward. And we were going to all of the precincts, 4-0, 4-1, 4-2, 4-3, 4-5, 4-6, 4-7, 4-8, 4-9, 4-10, 4-11, 4-12, 4-13, 4-14, 4-15, 4-16, 4-17, 4-18, 4-19, 4-20, 4-21, 4-22, 4-23, 4-24, 4-25, 4-26, 4-27, 4-28, 4-29, 4-30, 4-31, 4-32, 4-33, 4-34, 4-35, 4-36, 4-37, 4-38, 4-39, 4-40, 4-41, 4-42, 4-43, 4-44, 4-45, 4-46, 4-47, 4-48, 4-49, 4-50, 4-51, 4-52, 4-53, 4-54, 4-55, 4-56, 4-57, 4-58, 4-59, 4-60, 4-61, 4-62, 4-63, 4-64, 4-65, 4-66, 4-67, 4-68, 4-69, 4-70, 4-71, 4-72, 4-73, 4-74, 4-75, 4-76, 4-77, 4-78, 4-79, 4-80, 4-81, 4-82, 4-83, 4-84, 4-85, 4-86, 4-87, 4-88, 4-89, 4-90, 4-91, 4-92, 4-93, 4-94, 4-95, 4-96, 4-97, 4-98, 4-99, 4-100, 4-101, 4-102, 4-103, 4-104, 4-105, 4-106, 4-107, 4-108, 4-109, 4-110, 4-111, 4-112, 4-113, 4-114, 4-115, 4-116, 4-117, 4-118, 4-119, 4-120, 4-121, 4-122, 4-123, 4-124, 4-125, 4-126, 4-127, 4-128, 4-129, 4-130, 4-131, 4-132, 4-133, 4-134, 4-135, 4-136, 4-137, 4-138, 4-139, 4-140, 4-141, 4-142, 4-143, 4-144, 4-145, 4-146, 4-147, 4-148, 4-149, 4-150, 4-151, 4-152, 4-153, 4-154, 4-155, 4-156, 4-157, 4-158, 4-159, 4-160, 4-170, 4-171, 4-172, 4-173, 4-174, 4-175, 4-176, 4-177, 4-178, 4-178, 4-179, 4-180, 4-181, 4-182, 4-183, 4-184, 4-185, 4-186, 4-187, 4-188, 4-189, 4-190, 4-191, 4-192, 4-193, 4-194, 4-195, 4-196, 4-197, 4-198, 4-199, 4-200, 4-201, 4-202, 4-203, 4-204, 4-205, 4-206, 4-207, 4-208, 4-209, 4-210, 4-211, 4-212, 4-213, 4-214, 4-215, 4-216, 4-217, 4-218, 4-219, 4-220, 4-221, 4-222, 4-223, 4-224, 4-225, 4-26, 4-27, 4-28, 4-29, 4-30, 4-31, 4-32, 4-33, 4-34, 4-35, 4-36, 4-37, 4-38, 4-39, 4-40, 4-41, 4-42, 4-43, 4-44, 4-45, 4-46, 4-47, 4-48, 4-49, 4-50, 4-51, 4-52, 4-53, 4-54, 4-55, 4-56, 4-57, 4-58, 4-59, 4-60, 4-61, 4-62, 4-63, 4-64, 4-65, 4-66, 4-67, 4-68, 4-69, 4-70, 4-71, 4-72, 4-73, 4-74, 4-75, 4-76, 4-77, 4-78, 4-79, 4-80, 4-81, 4-82, 4-83, 4-84, 4-85, 4-86, 4-87, 4-88, 4-89, 4-90, 4-91, 4-92, 4-93, 4-94, 4-95, 4-96, 4-97, 4-98, 4-99, 4-100, 4-101, 4-102, 4-103, 4-104, 4-105, 4-106, 4-107, 4-108, 4-109, 4-110, 4-111, 4-112, 4-113, 4-114, 4-115, 4-116, 4-117, 4-118, 4-119, 4-120, 4-121, 4-122, 4-123, 4-124, 4-125, 4-126, 4-127, 4-128, 4-129, 4-130, 4-131, 4-132, 4-133, 4-134, 4-135, 4-136, 4-137, 4-138, 4-139, 4-140, 4-141, 4-142, 4-143, 4-144, 4-145, 4-146, 4-147, 4-148, 4-149, 4-150, 4-151, 4-152, 4-153, 4-154, 4-155, 4-156, 4-157, 4-158, 4-159, 4-160, 4-170, 4-171, 4-172, 4-173, 4-174, 4-175, 4-176, 4-177, 4-178, 4-178, 4-179, 4-180, 4-190, 4-191, 4-192, 4-193, 4-194, 4-195, 4-196, 4-197, 4-198, 4-199, 4-200, 4-201, 4-203, 4-204, 4-205, 4-206, 4-207, 4-208, 4-209, 4-210, 4-211, 4-212, 4-213, 4-214, 4-215, 4-216, 4-217, 4-218, 4-219, 4-220, 4-221, 4-222, 4-223, 4-224, 4-225, 4-226, 4-227, 4-228, 4-29, 4-30, 4-31, 4-32, 4-33, 4-34, 4-35, 4-36, 4-37, 4-38, 4-39, 4-40, 4-41, 4-42, 4-43, 4-44, 4-45, 4-46, 4-47, 4-48, 4-49, 4-50, 4-51, 4-52, 4-53, 4-54, 4-55, 4-56, 4-57, 4-58, 4-59, 4-60, 4-61, 4-62, 4-63, 4-64, 4-65, 4-66, 4-67, 4-68, 4-69, 4-70, 4-71, 4-72, 4-73, 4-74, 4-75, 4-76, 4-77, 4-78, 4-79, 4-80, 4-81, 4-82, 4-83, 4-84, 4-85, 4-86, 4-87, 4-88, 4-89, 4-90, 4-91, 4-92, 4-93, 4-94, 4-95, 4-96, 4-97, 4-98, 4-99, 4-100, 4-101, 4-102, 4-103, 4-104, 4-105, 4-106, 4-107, 4-108, 4-109, 4-110, 4-111, 4-112, 4-113, 4-114, 4-115, 4-116, 4-117, 4-118, 4-119, 4-120, 4-121, 4-122, 4-123, 4-124, 4-125, 4-126, 4-127, 4-128, 4-129, 4-130, 4-131, 4-132, 4-133, 4-134, 4-135, 4-136, 4-137, 4-138, 4-139, 4-140, 4-141, 4-142, 4-143, 4-144, 4-145, 4-146, 4-147, 4-148, 4-149, 4-150, 4-151, 4-152, 4-153, 4-154, 4-155, 4-156, 4-157, 4-158, 4-159, 4-160, 4-170, 4-171, 4-172, 4-173, 4-174, 4-175, 4-176, 4-177, 4-178, 4-178, 4-179, 4-180, 4-190, 4-191, 4-192, 4-193, 4-194, 4-195, 4-196, 4-197, 4-198, 4-199, 4-200, 4-201, 4-203, 4-204, 4-205, 4-206, 4-207, 4-208, 4-209, 4-210, 4-211, 4-212, 4-213, 4-214, 4-215, 4-216, 4-217, 4-218, 4-219, 4-220, 4-221, 4-222, 4-223, 4-224, 4-225, 4-226, 4-227, 4-28, 4-29, 4-30, 4-31, 4-32, 4-33, 4-34, 4-35, 4-36, 4-37, 4-38, 4-39, 4-40, 4-41, 4-42, 4-43, 4-44, 4-45, 4-46, 4-47, 4-48, 4-49, 4-50, 4-51, 4-52, 4-53, 4-54, 4-55, 4-56, 4-57, 4-58, 4-59, 4-60, 4-61, 4-62, 4-63, 4-64, 4-65, 4-66, 4-67, 4-68, 4-69, 4-70, 4-71, 4-72, 4-73, 4-74, 4-75, 4-76, 4-77, 4-78, 4-79, 4-80, 4-81, 4-82, 4-83, 4-84, 4-85, 4-86, 4-87, 4-88, 4-89, 4-90, 4-91, 4-92, 4-93, 4-94, 4-95, 4-96, 4-97, 4-98, 4-99, 4-100, 4-101, 4-102, 4-103, 4-104, 4-105, 4-106, 4-107, 4-108, 4-109, 4-110, 4-111, 4-112, 4-113, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114, 4-114
um, community uh, folks in certain community neighborhoods, uh, Throgs Neck neighborhood, um, Allerton neighborhood that has a co higher concentration of uh, poor uh, whites that align with the police that would threaten to come to our homes and et cetera. So what's also happening in, in real time are other confrontations because Mike Brown is already murdered. There are protests in the city happening nearly every single day, every night. This is happening in real time. So what we're doing in this moment is building coalition because we're at these pre-tech meetings, why accountability? Protests are happening in the street that we are attending. Barclay Center, 34th Street, Union Square that are pulling thousands and thousands of people. So we're beginning to connect with other like-minded individuals and organizations that are concerned about the black condition and again, want to move in a more organized way. So this is what's happening at, at that juncture, say 2014, that early, early 2014 before the no true bill of Daniel Pantaleo when the, when the uh, crackpot grand jury decides not to bring any charges against Daniel Pantaleo, you know, this kangaroo court for which, you know, your attorney general uh, present day still hasn't secured the grand jury transcripts for the community. I don't see how black people voted for her. All you have to do is wave somebody as the first black whatever, and everybody runs out to the polls and clicks and does no um, homework or, or vetting of who we're talking about. Um, one of our demands should have been, well, where's the grand jury transcripts you told us you were going to get? You better get them if you want to be in office. We want to read why this pig is not indicted, which in the background, we know why, but the, the specifics of that. Um, so that is what we were doing in those very early months, really just pulling together our coalitions and understanding what the landscape is right we were we were black and mad right i say black and mad is not enough but you know we were black and mad so we're still even trying to figure out what moving in an organized way even means it's like a protest tonight there's a meeting at at, at this place tonight where there are 300 people that have their own ideas about how to move on this a precinct meeting the next night i mean the pacing was at a fever pitch in um in 2014, so you know, we didn't know what we, we didn't know what we were doing. You know, phrases of, of like mutual aid uh, weren't hitting just yet, at least amongst us, just yet. Um, it wasn't until 2016. Now, by 2016, you have Eric Garner, Mike Brown. Akai Gurley, John Crawford, Sandra Bland. Now, now it's really, really at, at a fever pitch. So by 2016, we have uh, amassed a coalition of organizations that are activist organizations, right? Now, these keyboard people that um, were committed to addressing this uh, rabid police phenomenon in New York City that was completely out of control. And one of the things that we came up with um, at that time, why accountability was in the coalition to end broken windows, and we came up with Swipe It Forward, which is still alive today, right? So what we were talking about was addressing how police brutality manifests itself in the transit system. You know, so, Sister Shannon, I have a clip for that. Can I show that real quick, some of it? And then you talk more about it. Okay. Sure. Excellent. Excellent. Hold on. Once again, this is Brother IJ Taimbo, Black Liberation Coach from Harlem. We building with Sister Shannon Elaine, a co-founder of the Y Accountability Organization. And we're about to see a clip that's going to show us uh, what swipe the Swipe It Forward campaign is about. And Sister Shannon is going to come in and fill in the gaps for us so we know exactly what we just saw in this importance. Today and our independence as an organization. Sorry, wrong one. Sorry, wrong one. <laughs> mm. 
You know what? I don't think I have that. This instead is the, the FTP4 protest while I Again, find another clip. These are the peaks on Alexander Avenue uh, with long weapons. South, South Bronx, South Bronx. Fuck the police! We are currently trapped at 136 and Brook Avenue since 745. They are pushing us. 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 Stay tight. Stay tight. Stay tight. Graben esto. Graben esto. Tomenle screenshot porque yo no sé lo que ellos van a hacer con esto. They won't let us go. Yeah. The BX is here though. Fuck that. Fuck that. Fuck that. They got me fucked up. Now, Sister Shannon, my apologies. I'm still I'm trying to find that clip. I think we lost Sister Shannon <laughs> on the thread. Uh but we were looking at a clip of FTP4 which is okay there we got sister shannon ftp4 and uh sister shannon are you ready for us hold on my apologies i'm trying to find that swipe it forward clip but in the meantime i played the ftp4 could you fill in those watching on what ftp means why those protests are significant and why they should be a part of them All right, so uh, uh, I'll segue that into what Swipe It Forward is about. So through that coalition building, we crafted Why Accountability, the coalition to end broken windows, which contained, you know, other organization uh, groups sat down and crafted Swipe It Forward, right? So at by 20, we're, we're moving. Oh, ready to hurt Sorry about that. Please continue. I what I was going to say was by 2016, we understood the value of coalition building and coalition work, right? It's not necessarily how many people you have. You can have 50 people in your organization. You can have 100 people. You can have 1,000 people in your organization, but your organization isn't the only one that exists, correct? and other organizations that are active in doing excellent work, you must coalition build with them. So that was the lesson that we learned definitely by 2015, the value of coalition building. And through that coalition building, we were able to build strong mechanisms that were able to mobilize the community in, in, a, in, a, in a real way in order to respond to uh, rabbit pig behavior in the city. So swipe it forward was one of those things, right? And when you get the clip up, I'll talk about it more specifically. I'm, I'm ready now, Shannon. I got the clip for you, my sister. You ready? All right. Yeah, I'm ready. Here we go. All right, let's go, family. This is we're looking at the swipe it forward campaign, which takes place in the subway system of New York City. Check it out. Shame on you! Shame on you! Today's the day we're giving out free swipes so everybody can get to work on time. No undercover cops can get the quota that they need to bring back to the precinct. It's going to be none of that today. Need a swipe, y'all? It's okay. Poverty is not a crime. Why are you doing this? Keep 
people get arrested and ticketed every single day right. for being swiped in the subway. And that's, if you think about it, that's not a crime at all. We've had enough of NYPD putting a financial strain on our communities through transit summonses, fines, arrests, warrants, harassment, etc. There's always been the subway system. It's the hard blood of New York, and it's been the hard blood of policing New York for at least the last 20 years. So we swipe them in, we figure we're saving not only as taxpayers, but we're also saving that individual person a night in jail, something on their record. The interaction with the police officers, which could end up in an ass kicking, which could end up in somebody being choked to death. So we just want to make the police as irrelevant as, as we can within our power. We know our rights. We know the rules. We are swiping our fellow New Yorkers for free today. It's not something that people should be arrested for, much less to get it. I so, think that's one. Yeah. The beauty of this action is that the cops can't do anything about it. Like it really, it sits right in there, it's still resistance, but it's within the law, so they just stuck, unless they do something real stupid, and we got the cameras for that. You talk to people, this issue resonates with people. This isn't people who are necessarily of a hatred of police, or they just, they understand that this is part of the system that's crushing them every single day. But to see somebody come up and be like, yeah, well this happened to me, or that's happened to me, that's the best feeling, because we're connecting directly with people. We don't have to necessarily speak truth to power, we're speaking truth to the people we know understand that truth better than anybody. Wow. You know, Sister Shannon, I was able to participate in two Swipe before I can. I wasn't doing anything real serious. I was just there just to check it out. And I was very, very much um, impressed with it. Uh, it, it, it's all, it covers all the bases of grassroots organizing. It, it engages the people right where they are in real time. It educates the people. It inspires the people to organize them. It recruits people. It serves the people's interests. And it bangs on the enemy. Got to love it. You got to love it. But could you put on the gas bus? What were we seeing, and 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 why was that important? And what statement were you trying to make? Well, what you were seeing was a citywide action, right? So the the clips uh, of me in it before I uh, went natural. Um, the clips that you see in there of me uh, were in the Bronx, right? We're at one forty ninth and third. Uh, poorest congressional district in the state, right? And then the other clips that you see are at Harlem, uh, 125th Street. Um, what also didn't make the video were uh, other Brooklyn actions on Fulton and Nostrand. So as I was saying before we uh, played the clip, is that we understood the importance of coalition building to get things done. So the politics of it is a uh, 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 policing, a uh, procedure called broken windows, right? You will find it on paper, but it's also part of this kind of white supremacist junk science that says if you let a window go broken, it'll lead to murder. And I'm just giving you the quick and dirty definition of what that look that of, of what that junk science says. So then, the, what the police do is overload the transit system with with pigs. And what they do is just basically prey on black people and um, uh, vulnerable uh, folks. So we knew that part of relieving the, the, the oppression in our communities in that small way is to call for, to, for the end of broken windows. We then engage the community by saying, wait a minute, you can play a role in ending broken windows because you have the ability to cut off a certain uh, uh, track by which we are thrust into jail and into prison. So one of those ways is through fair beaten tickets and arrests, right? So this was the real way that we address police brutality and specifically in the transit system. Now, what you will notice, and this is what I encourage uh, the people viewing and listening right now, recognize that fast forward to now 2021, there's a totally different culture in the transit system, right? It's not, oh, I'm not swiping him and he got to enjoy his, oh, look at her wig, I'm not swiping him and, and he need to get a job, that's why I'm not swiping. No, 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 no. That action that goes up until today has changed the social culture 
of behavior in New York City. So it's not about me sizing you up to see what you have on. It's about, I don't care what you look like or what your situation is. I'm swiping you in because you cannot get roped up in this system. So that is how you have a tangible and measurable result from your activism that is, you know, this kind of confrontational way of addressing it. Now, make no mistake, why accountability has the politics to go through, go, go with it too. Black and mad is not enough. It's just not enough. In 2014, you know, our idea of, you know, if this 100,000 people are, are, are angry and there are these turnups happening, for four months or three months, you know, there's going to be some change. No, black and mad is not enough. We have to move in an organized, concerted way, grounded in the appropriate black political education in order to get the relief from oppression that we are seeking. So that 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 really is my take on uh, Swipe It Forward if anyone has any questions. Family, we encourage you to post your questions, and I will certainly try my best to post the questions visibly so Sister Shannon can see it and so we can address it. Uh, that swipe it forward so, is really powerful, family, for all the reasons that Sister Shannon enunciated and even more. Um, now, I know you also have an FTP piece. I showed it earlier. I want to show that again, and I want you to fill us in on that. We're going to see a little piece of a clip. This is FTP4, I believe, Sister Shannon, because I think there were, yeah, there were four different protests. I'm gonna show you a piece of the clip. Again, engaging our community. Again, educating our community. Again, mobilizing our community. And we're gonna right. come back to Sister right. Shannon, who's gonna uh, make it all make sense for us. Hold on one second, family. La gente estaba ahí, haciéndole en estos puercos, y lo que vienen a hacer es abusar. I got maids, but luckily, you know what I mean? My people have my back. I, I see you can barely see. Look, 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 look. Wallin, wallin again. Wallin again. Wallin. Bronx, Bronx. Let, let that shit be known, bro. Bronx. Let that shit be known. Hold on, hold on. It's okay. It's okay, Taylor. Wild again. Wild again. The whole world's watching. Yo, it's looking like 1968 out here, my niggas. I got gassed. I got pepper sprayed. I got straight pepper sprayed. My daughter got pepper sprayed. My daughter got pepper sprayed. Had a whole fucking panic attack. All right, guys. They still barricading. They are stuffing mad people in that bus still. That shit's been there for almost an hour. They are literally out here. When I tell you they just started indiscriminately snatching up motherfuckers, literally everybody's standing there, nobody's saying nothing. And then they just started snatching people. They started standing on cars and just beating niggas. How the fuck you sleep at night, bro? See if they're thirsty. Feed them. They're fighting for your rights. Now, that was graphic to some of you watching, but... um trying to get you in the space and thinking of an organizer, of an activist. Uh, now, Sister Shannon, for those who are not familiar with protests and activism, it takes great courage to, because you're actually putting your, your physical body on the line. People are getting hurt. People are getting arrested. People are getting removed from their families, right? Could you give us a sense of what on earth would compel 
black people or any human being to do all of that sacrificing, what is it that's driving you and organizations like Why Accountability to put your bodies on the line in that way? Um, before I answer the question, I want to make sure that I give credit to uh, the video compilation that you just saw. Um, that video compilation was put together by Rodrigo Stars. Everyone can follow him across social media. He's the person that actually did my very first interview in August of 2014 at an Eric Garner rally in Staten Island. And from there, we have what I talked about earlier was the coalition building. Um, the black woman that you also saw in the video is Mama Tanya. She runs a Liberty Farm for African people in Hunts Point, Longwood, Hunts Point area um, mm. on 163rd Street. She actually feeds the people. Um, I've mm. definitely purchased fruits, vegetables, honey from her, um, as well as people in the community. So when the police exacted violence on um, at 136th Street and Brook Avenue, which we refer to now as Bronx Bloody Thursday, Bronx Bloody Thursday, I'll say it three times, Bronx Bloody Thursday, um, members of our community were attacked, members that have been a positive force, an influential force in our community were beaten and attacked like Mama Tanya. Um, so it, it's important to say that up front so you know exactly what you're looking at. Um, also, what you did not see in the clip was after, you know, while folks were being uh, kettled in and laying on the on the ground at 136 in Brook Avenue, the police proceeded to maraud throughout the surrounding community, St. Anne's Avenue, Brook Avenue, 138th Street, and just round up Black people, round up uh, uh, brown people, and beat them and brutalize them and, and brandish batons on them and, and et cetera. So this was, was really, really tough. Um, when you see the uh, pig on a bike uh, with the bike suit on in that video, that points, they're actually pointing at me. I was targeted for arrest at that action and placed in a chokehold and, and arrested. Um, so I, I wanted to make sure people understood, understood the layout there. Um, why do we why do we do this? Why do we sacrifice in that way, right? Because this this format that we're in right now, this educational format and this storytelling format. Is, is pretty much safe in terms of my physical body, right? No, no one is accessing me at this moment to hit me on the head with a baton or choke me or induce labor or, or scratch my cornea or give me a heart attack, the literal things that happen to people at FTP4. But we engage in street resistance because we are doing very many things at one time, right? We are sending our message to the community. Our message is also the community's message. We're together, right? As one of my jegners say, look, we all in the swamp. You know, don't don't get it twisted. Like you know, you you get some political education, and now you you've risen to this kind of uh, cherub like place over and above people. Absolutely not. We're all in the swamp. So when we're coming out with a message, it's the community's message. It's the message that black people are not affirmed in saying throughout our lives, right? It, it, in school, your teacher is not going to teach you that saying fuck the police is, is socially, culturally, and politically just, right? You're going to be told all of the reasons why you should not say it. Um, so we're coming with the community's message and affirming that message, and we're doing it again in that uh, tangible way. Uh, but no matter what way Black people work to solve our own problems, to coalesce together and mobilize together, whether it is on this platform, right? Because uh, aren't uh, uh, rich oligarchs working to shadow and people that are delivering information to the community and even in this way, whether you do uh, street resistance, uh, or mutual aid, there is always violence that will be perpetuated on black people for engaging in 
uh, relief from oppression, right? Once when we engage in rebellion, this goes back to uh, the slave plantation, these things are, are, are metaphoric for that, right? Our rebellions will be met with violence. So that violence comes in the form of censoring, shadow banning, straight up getting your butt beat, miseducation, the, the, uh, the very thick gatekeeping layer uh, of, of uh, what you call Brother AJ, enemy collaborators that work in, in, in concert with, the, uh, with white supremacy in order to prevent our uh, unity and rise, right? So all of these methods of violence and for us as an organization, as why accountability, we know, listen, we have our jegnas that we look to for information, for guidance, for political education. But at the end of the day, yo, we're young enough to still hit that street. And what we find is people that say, oh, I'm tired of marching, I'm tired of protesting, are people that have never done it. People that have never done it. No, you tired of watching it. You tired of being held accountable for being non-participatory. That's really what you're tired of. You're tired of the fact that your call out is, is just a few clicks away in terms of how you are serving as that thick uh, gatekeeping uh, layer of white supremacy. So this is this is why we do it. And just to give a background about what FTP is, right? That was FTP four. So that meant there was a one, a two, and a three. So uh, FTP means we know fuck the police. It also means feed the people. It also means fuck the politicians. It also means you know uh, 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 things that uh, bring unity together for us. So back in October of 2019, because you know 2020 is like this whole dub year with with uh, SARS COVID. Um, uh, coronavirus too. Um, but in 2019, October of 2019, there were two major incidents that happened in the transit system. Again, pulling together that broken windows policing with extreme violence against black people. Teenagers were beaten in the J Street uh, Metro Tech subway station on the A line in Brooklyn. I want to say that date was October 27th. Um, there was video of that where police went on a brazen rampage and were just punching kids in the face on the platform. And what I want to add about that is one of those police officers on that platform was the black female police officer that beat up um, Jasmine Headley in the welfare office earlier that year. So all they do is get shuffled around to different commands, but continue to exact violence. And then in the two train line on the Franklin Avenue station, again in BK, the police drew guns out on a full train car and uh, beat up Adrian Napier, uh, 19 years old. So as a community, we have to mobilize around that. Like there are these moments where it's like, all right. We, we see this shit, but there comes a point where you can't just be an observationist. That's just self-deprecating, low self-esteem, low self-pride. We have to have pride in ourselves and pride in our community, our collective dignity, right? That's what why accountability is about, our collective dignity, and say, uh-uh, yo, 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 this is not my kid, but we have to rise up like it, it, it is our child. And that's what we did. And that's how FTP was born, November 1st of 2019, upwards of 3,000 people, complete shutdown of the downtown Brooklyn area, Barclays Center, et cetera. The biggest mass hop, I would want to say, someone can uh, keep me honest, in international history where hundreds of people jumped the turnstile in protest to broken windows policing and the beating of our children in the subway. And we uh, came up with a list of demands. Again, that coalition building. What were our demands? Cops out of the subway, uh, free transportation, fair, uh, uh, full accessibility for the differently abled and disabled, and and um, no harassment of street vendors. Because after these two major incidents, what occurred after that is the cops started messing with the churro lady. 
What are you messing with the churro lady for? She sells churros. Those churros that are being sold actually keep New York City running because if I could grab a churro between my first job and my second job or getting off of work and picking up my kids to do this or that, this is what it is, is, is the sugar or the hype that black New York City needs in order to keep moving. Why are you messing with the churro lady? So cops started messing with the churro lady. So we're like, wait a minute. Cuomo, who fast forward to now is dealing with his own issues of, of being a, 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 a granny killer and a booty bandit. Now, you know, is ordering 500 more cops in the subway. So we had to keep going until our demands were met, right? That's what activism is all about. We have this action. Is a serious problem. We have a list of demands. Where's the or else, right? Everybody went to justice or else. That's the or else. So on November 22nd of 2019 was FTP2. We met at Harriet Tubman Memorial because of its historical significance to uh, African people and freedom fighting. And we came out again. I don't know the estimates. I'm going to say once again, 3,000 people. And by that time, the city was responding to us. So if anyone was out there for FTP2, you would know that the transit system completely cut off all stops along 125th Street from Broadway to Lexington Avenue. You could not exit the train at those stations. They were doing skip stop. Um, and that was in response to us. And again, more uh, harassment of street vendors. Uh, the young brother that was selling candy at 125th and Lex gets tackled by the police by this time. More Truro ladies are getting arrested. Um, there's approval for 500 MTA police into the train station. This is this is ridiculous. So in, in keeping and including our uh, demands, there was FTP3. That was on January 31st of 2020. And at that protest, by that time, there was a diversity of tactics where people okay. began to take ownership of their own street resistance and enact street resistance in their own way, right? Which again is what I said earlier in the broadcast is we encourage people to form their own organizations. Right. You only yeah. need two people to become organized. Only two. You don't need 50. Stop waiting for 50. If you and your homie say enough of this or enough of that, whether it's police brutality, a medical apartheid, um, 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 poor education in the black community, etc. Get out here and address it and do it in a confrontational way and in a real tangible way while also collecting your black political education. So you move in such a way that is liberating to the people and you're not complicit in, in white supremacy. Excellent. Excellent. Sister Shannon. Now I noticed that um, you do your organization organization does good modeling because we also realize as activists, organizers, educators, we're on stage. People are seeing us. Some people are learning from us for the first time. What is a protest? What are the different components? What is political education? How does that play out? And I want to show a brief clip where I believe that why accountability is in front of the people's church. And, and as we're looking at that, we see some political education going on and engaging the community going on. I want to show a piece of it, Sister Shannon, and maybe you could fill us in afterwards, okay? Thank you, sure, let's do it. Let's do it. In the middle is the symbol of a war cry because we are at war. So I will explain. What's going on? Okay, so we're here in front of the uh, People's Church, Church of the Young Lords. We thank the Rev Malave for offering this space as a stage and area. And our organization, Bronx Sites for NYPD Accountability, also known as My Accountability, is uh, doing service to the people today for Black Solidarity Day. Black Solidarity Day started in Brooklyn in 1968 by Dr. Carlos Russell. And it was based on a play called The Day of Absence by Dr. Charles Ward. And the play was about what would happen if all of the black people disappeared. So as a result, what black people do on Black Solidarity Day is no work, no school, and no shopping to show that we have political, social, and cultural value and the practice of withholding our labor. 
over the years, other black people have used this time to discuss the vote. Um, so that's our time to come together to plan our way forward as black people. So our organization is a black liberation organization, as you can see on our logo, the red, black, and green. That means we promote unity across the entire diaspora, Africans that were deposited all over the global south, the west, the United States. So we practice Sankofa, which means go back and fetch it. So we're exercising a practice from 1968 today. And the femininity of our organization, which is the caring and core helping that we do. And then the help me, help us, help you symbol, which is exemplifies what we're doing today and our independence as an organization. In the middle is the symbol of a war cry because we are at war. So our expression in the Dinkra symbols describes our organization and what we constantly strive to do. So that's us, that's what we got going on. People's Church, one o'clock, wild supplies, the house. Um, if folks want to assist us and donate, we're on GoFundMe.com slash Y Accountability. You can chat it up with us on all social media platforms, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Also, um, info at YAccountability.com. And that's what it is for today. So now, right there was really a good example of how really solid organizing takes on all these different elements. So I believe you're feeding the people, and correct me when I'm wrong, you're feeding the people, you're educating the people on the Dinkra symbols, <laughs> right? The red, black, and green, and teaching them about what Black Solidarity Day is, all in one action. That's very, very strong. Sister Shannon, could you fill us in on anything I may have missed or anything you think is important. And family, please, we want questions for Sister Shannon. We want comments to keep this engaging. Uh, okay. Hold on one second. We got to bring Sister Shannon back in. Did you fill us in on what we saw, Sister Shannon? That was a really good example of organizing and all the different elements that involved. Right. So. Um, thank you to, uh, Marina, uh, Jordona Ortiz for filming that. Um, we have to link, right? This is why in our, uh, logo, you have the Sankofa symbol, right? So you have to link the past to the present to understand exactly what you're doing now and why you're doing it. So this is why I say black and mad is not enough. Yeah, you're mad, but what are you doing and why are you doing it? And how do your actions lead to liberation? How do they honor the people of the past that made the sacrifices before you were born on and on, right? So here's Black Solidarity Day. And if we wanna live by that, it's okay, no work. No school, no shopping. It's the day of absence. But we were also or are also in a pandemic where people are really, really suffering. So we engage in a mutual aid action in order to provide masks and food to the community. We have an extreme explosion of single homeless. At the time, the train was not running 24 hours where people were using the transit system as a refuge. Now they're getting kicked out at midnight. So we are also responding to the needs of our brothers and sisters in the community. And we can't say, you know, oh, uh, we're on social media showing the trips that we go on, the cars that we drive, you know, the, the, the new glasses we buy and things of that nature, but are not working in community and providing the needs for all of our community, all of our brothers and sisters who, who, are, who are in need. So this is the way we tackle all of those things at, at one time. Okay, um, now you've been involved and I, I think it's very interesting for people to know, it's not like Sister Shannon, you were this activist right when you came out the womb <laughs> with the red, black, and green flag. No. Right? You were a average assistant in the community, going to work, raising your son, I believe, 
doing what you had to do, and a, and a specific incident occurred that really, for whatever reason, connected with you, I think, and got and pulled on you and said, you know what, I got to get involved. I think that's important for people watching to know that people enter these things at different levels, and it's all right. We don't, we're not knocking how long you've been involved or how you get into it. We just want to see you get into activism and getting involved in some way. Um, but what have you seen from where you sit as an organized and activist? What are some of your critiques? What are some of your observations, the things you think we can do better, the places we need to stretch and expand from where you sit? What do you see? Um, I would say that positively speaking, we are in a, in a place where those that are clear are crystal clear, right? crystal clear. Um, however, on the flip side, we are in a strong, strong place of careerism and opportunism around the brutality and oppression of our people. This is an opportunity zone for so many people, so many people are getting paid off of this. Literal money, getting paid off of this. So those folks that are a, that are securing monies, and I'm not talking about funding that operates your mutual aid and your community organizing. I'm talking about money that's going directly into your pocket that does not reach your community or your brothers and sisters in any way, right? So we have a deep opportunism, which is supported by mass mind control media, right? So folks are still glued to the tube um, and in a lot of ways glued to YouTube and watching these folks and interpreting their actions as grassroots activism when it really is not. It is careerism, it's opportunism, it's that thick gatekeeping layer I spoke about earlier. It's about um, being complicit in white supremacy and um, misleading the people. We have a serious problem with that where our, uh, our masses, our brothers and sisters cannot discern what an opportunist is, what a careerist is from a person that is actually active in the community. Using FTP4 as an example, if you watch the news and you see clips of the summer protests, they don't show FTP4. They don't, period. They'll show you clips of the brother that got his mask pulled down and the police sprayed him in the face. You'll see the clips of the NYPD vehicle running over people in BK, right? Which you will not. And you'll see the, the clips of the woman that got shoved to the ground and her head hit the concrete, the young lady. But you will not see footage and information of FTP4. Still a summer protest, right? It's from in between uh, when George Floyd was murdered in... Um, May 25th until our action on June 4th. Why would the media, Channel 7, 2, 4, 11, not show FTP4? And I encourage all of you to hashtag it and look at all of the available uh, video uh, on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, etc., so you can see the brutality levied against us directly. But why would these mass media outlets not show that? Because to show that would also show this, right? To show that would also show this. It would highlight Pan Africanism, right? It would highlight all of these principles that are not gatekeeping of white supremacy. It would beg uh, questions and answers around what our organization is about, why accountability, and other organizations that work in coalition uh, with us and the type of people. Hello. You know what? Um, and the type of people that come out uh, to support us, right? So the reasons why the media wouldn't show you these things keeps us un unknown 
right? And not we want to be known so we can latch on to that opportunism. No, latch on so that folks can be inspired to also do this. They can't stop all of us. They can't fight all of us, but they could definitely beat on 250 people. Make no mistake. <laughs> they could beat on 250 people. Can they beat on 250,000 people? I don't think so. New York City has 15 million people. When these incidents happen, there's no reason why there should not be 10, 20, 30, 50,000 black people coming out at, at one time, mobilizing. Right. But the mass mind control media, which is an agent of white supremacy, isn't going to show you the organizations that foster that appropriate black political education. Thank you for that, Sister Shannon. Um, now we have somebody's raised a question. Family, we have 15 minutes left. This is a great time to help contextualize everything the sister shared with us with some questions and some comments, all right? Uh, so Sister Brenda is asking, she's giving a salute to white accountability. She's basically asking, have you seen improvements or decline in the incidents involving police brutality and the priests that you challenged? And before Sister Shannon answers that, that's very complicated because this is a big issue. And it's important we understand that we may not always see immediate uh, sort of results. So we may not always be able to be like, because we had this protest, Rollo didn't get his head beaten. But what you might see is that more black people, that new Africans are getting involved. There's more of a voice. But I want uh, Sister Shannon to address that. It's a very good question, though. It's a very, very good question. Thank you, Sister Brenda. And it's actually an easy question. Uh, have we seen decline? Hell no. Hell no. <laughs> People still getting their ass whooped all right. over the Bronx, right? So, so then, right? So then, there's there's that follow up. So you're doing all of this for what? You're doing all of this for what, right? So if people still getting their ass whooped. Then what are you doing, right? No, not ex no, right? So it's what have we seen? No, not a decline in brutality incidents. What you've seen is more cop watching, more cop watchers. These incidents are being captured on uh, on video. So folks that are brutalized can determine what level of redress that they want to take. We're bringing this out. We brought this out of the shadows, right? Um, quite frankly, and let's be real, if we want to say politically and socially we're at war, yes, what the police have now done is create a different format for precinct meetings. Our presence at precinct meetings for nearly four years straight made them decide we have to do this differently because we need to box out these folks that are coming in to, to confront us on our conduct. So now they have what's called build the block meetings where they've divided the precinct into sectors and you have to show ID to get in. Now that we're in coronavirus, these things are happening online, but um, they definitely are, are learning lessons too. This is what I tell people, you know, this goes to our indoctrination. We have this idea that this is going to be this big, you know, white horse that comes down. Whoa, whoa, black people are free and just start lashing Nazis and lashing not white supremacists and lashing opportunicoons and lashing police. Hell no, get out of fantasy land. That's the woo in Wakusu. Wake up and understand the situation that you're in. When we engage in street resistance, when we engage in direct confrontation, when we engage in mobilization of the masses, what happens? Uh, hello, white supremacy learns lessons as well. And they augment in order to ensure that what we do doesn't become a pattern in practice. Pulling back to swipe it forward, what you can see is now that we freely swipe each other in, we don't care. Jordan's lace front wig, fur coat, we don't care. You need a swipe, you getting a swipe. Now you have the Omni machines, right? So white supremacy also works and learns lessons. So, you know, there are improvements in some ways and declines in others. Absolutely. The white man is always studying you, family, African, New African. We're not the only ones in this. It's, it's not a vacuum. We have enemies that are real. 
And just as we try to observe what they're doing, they are always observing what we're doing, and they are constantly trying to adapt and adjust. I want to um, give notice to a few comments, uh, Sister Shannon, mm -hmm. that I think are very important. Uh, Queen Lowe says that in New York City, they ended the APM curfew after FTP4. So she's That's giving she's giving an example of influence and impact. Uh, Pop Style, what up, Pop Style, my sister? Hopefully you'll be on the next broadcast with Sister Shannon. She says, yes, two days after FTP4, the curfew was lifted, right? So we do see, and then I think Sister Queen Glenn says, New York City amped up the subway transit payment system, the Omni. So I think that also helps to answer Sister Brenda's question, give it, gives it a little bit of complication. That yes, there's an impact and influence, but it's not going to be no. We start getting our asses kicked because people are protesting. It might be that we get our asses kicked more. That's you know? right. Right. But and, th and this is and this is and this is why we, the activist community, need all of you. What I'm supposed to keep getting choco every time I go outside. Somebody's supposed to keep getting their face scraped across the ground outside you know this whole kind of bourgeois attitude that oh 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 somebody else is doing it i don't have to do it or you just watch other people do it you know i li i literally had someone tell me on my facebook that no i'm not the type to go in the street i'm the type of person to sip my wine and just pay and i'm like hold on sis that was a very bourgeois thing to say, and we cannot have this type of uh, 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 African hierarchy that, you know, impedes our liberation. I found it to be a very disgusting thing to say. So this is why we do need everyone to be involved in, in every way. Well said. Family, I want to... Uh draw your attention to a few things first of all i want to make sure that everyone watching knows how to stay in contact with and follow up with why accountability we have a ticker that's scrolling on the bottom that's been scrolling on and off throughout the show make sure you call make sure you email make sure you check go to the website they also have a uh, a facebook presence um i'm sure sister shannon you can use more bodies that are committed, more people that are committed to do some work, not just right. bodies showing mm -hmm. up in a building, right? right. We could use right. money and other resources. We could use people that are pro promoting your events. Do you have, does the organization have a cash app or, or GoFundMe or anything like that? We currently do have a GoFundMe. Yes, we do. It's on GoFundMe.com slash Y Accountability. We use those funds to support our direct community education. So that was a segue. I know I've showed uh, this card a few times, right? But it actually, you know, folds up and tells you about the organization and what our organization is about. But at the same time, it's a know your rights card. So it lets people know what to do if they're stopped by NYPD if they're arrested, if you're in your car and also in the house, right? Because we're in this phenomenon of no-knock warrants, Breonna Taylor, the um, raids in NYCHA public housing. So uh, your financial support goes to keep that information out on the street. Our current campaign is of course, community education. So we are still committed to make sure that people understand how to protect yourself, protect your phone, protect the contacts in your phone, make sure you're not dragged into the precinct and you're running your mouth talking to these pigs, loose lips sink ships, baby, not even on your free phone call, okay? When they locked my ass up at FTP4, I took a nap. I ain't say shit to nobody in the cell, none of them pigs, nothing, you hear me? So your financial support goes uh, to support that. And also we all, always need help physically giving these out, you know, our organization up to this point has put out about 7,000 of these in the street. There could be 9 million black and brown people in the city of New York that could use this information, right? The uh, NYCHA developments where we see the biggest raids, there are about 500,000 people living in, you know, NYCHA public housing that need this information on how to uh, avoid uh, being raided and put up on RICO. So the financial support helps. 
Uh, we also always need people to assist us in our mutual aid actions, whether that be mass distribution, food distribution. I mean, and yes, and also be committed, right? It's not something that you do because it's on the news right now and it's popping and something you want to, you know, check off. I, what I noticed over the summer was the, the protests were, or were becoming satire, at, at a certain point, it was like Caribbeans for George Floyd and black lives, Asians for black lives, this for black lives. Like it was getting to be a, a joke and we're not joking, right? People that have been to prison, people that are still in prison 50 years, this is not a joke, right? So anyone that is interested in uh, obtaining these uh, pieces of community education that we have, please contact us at info at whyaccountability.com. We'll make sure and get uh, uh, those to you so you can be participatory. And we always encourage people, form your own organization, become politically educated in the Black radical tradition. That rad Black radical tradition is rebellion. We were kidnapped here. We got no business here. But now that we're here, how can we make sure that we receive reparations, we live thriving, healthy lives that are free of uh, brutality and oppression, whether that be the police beating on your head, whether that be the insurance company giving you an extra 2.5% on your interest rates because you black and all of these other things that, that, that you know happened to us. So that is the, the deal, the real deal, holy fear. That's what's up. That's sister once again, Shannon Lane, co-founder of uh, Why Accountability, that uh, not only bangs on the police every chance they get, they also try to feed our people education, food, information. They try to organize the people and they try to get the people from off the sidelines. Would you agree, sister Shannon, that we need more players on the field? We got a lot yes, of so. people on the field. Could you talk about that a little bit more before we end? It's very important. Great euphemism, right? So those of us that have watched football at any point in time or any so-called spectator sport, that euphemism is that you have people that are actually playing, that engage in the contact of it, that contact. Those that are, were at FTP4 that got brutalized were in the contact. Then you have your referees and then you have people just sitting and watching, they're eating a Frank, drinking a beer, and just watching. This is what's happening on social media every day. And what we need to understand is that even this platform that we are, are on now is social engineering. It is encouraging you to have a, a, an opinion and let that opinion also only live on this platform that can be censored, that can be molded in order to keep you a permanent spectator and make uh, spectating part of your culture. If we do not become active participants in our liberation, we are condemning our future generations to the same problems that we are experiencing now. The reason why I am active is not because I believe that revolution or freedom will be available to me. I'm doing it in order to ensure that my great great grandchildren experience the freedom that we deserve as Africans that were kidnapped here and in other parts of uh, uh, the so called global south and etc. So, this is why we cannot have this as spectator. And I would, and, and, and I'm de definitely doing a call out to the opportunists, whether those be non-Black POCs that engage in commodifying our pain and commodifying our struggle and masquerading themselves as Africans, as Africans concerned with our condition and liberation, we're behind where what they're doing is, is just securing their own uh, streams of income and careerism. That's another consequence of, of spectating where what you're allowing is people to live off this, right? What we know now with BLM is even though Black Lives Matter is something that we can all understand and relate to, it was actually a, a big jux to come in and steal the, the fire and the righteous anger from Ferguson protesters from the murder of Mike Brown uh, 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 by uh, pigs 
in order to funnel monies into the Democratic Party while not giving anything back to the community. So, you know, that can't be acceptable. And the only reason why it's acceptable and why it persists is because too many of us are, are being bougie armchair revolutionaries sitting at home and giving our uninformed or less informed opinions mm -hmm. on a censorship platform. Oh, man. All I can say to that is agreed, agreed, agreed. Uh, Sister Shannon, listen, it's always a pleasure to have you on the show. I think you helped to model for our people um, the fact that we can be living history. You know, this is Women's History Month, then it was Black History Month, and we tend to get caught up in looking backwards. And we forget Sankofa says to fetch. Fetch means you go back. You go here, but you bring it back. If you don't bring it back to the present, it's not fetching. And so I think that you, Sister Najib, and Sister Ann Jeffries, and a lot of the people that I know are down with the movement that you're involved in, helped us remember that it's not enough to talk about what Grandpa did in Garvey and X. We're supposed to be talking about what we're doing. So our grandchildren are saying what Grandma Shannon Elaine did. Can you picture that Grandma Shannon Elaine one day? What Grandpa R.J. Taim, but what did they do? Living history, family, in different ways. So we really thank you. Sister Shannon, is there anything you want to say that wasn't on this script that you want to get out? Uh, what I want to get out is uh, my message to Black women um, is for us to remain hypervigilant in our activism, to be protectors of our Black men and our Black families, all of our brothers and sisters that are African people worldwide. Pan-Africanism is a must and is important. We have to put our money where our mouth is. We got to put our feet where our mouth is. And we have to be protective of this movement and protective of activism and always be vocal around um, our condition and the, and, the, and the work that we do. So again, uh, you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok. We're on TikTok. Um, and also to uh, swipe it forward as well. And I always thank you for having me on your programming. Um, when why accountability is uh, shown on this platform from such a master scholar such as yourself that curates such great people to be examples to our people, this is something that is greatly, greatly appreciated. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Shannon. Once again, thank you, thank you, thank you. Sister Brenda also says salute to you again. Why accountability? Thank you for your contribution to our liberation. Praying for your safety. And uh, Sister Ann Jeffries, I haven't seen you in a minute. Sister Ann, I hope you're well. She says, Ashe. And we thank all of you for joining us. Um, as we get ready to close out, thank you again, Sister Shannon. We will be in touch. And anything that I slash we can do, Harlem Liberation School, Black Liberation University, let us know um, any way we can be of support. I, wanna, I want to, I'm still recovering. I've had three surgeries on my leg and a bunch of stuff going on, but I would like to be uh, uh, more uh, uh, present. Uh, if nothing else, to be able to cover some of these events, interview some people, and even give possibly some little street political education. You feel me? <laughs> Absolutely. You know, it is our duty to fight for our freedom. That's right. And I'm also proud to say, uh, without claiming credit, that Sister Shannon and some of her particular comrades uh, at one time were regular uh, patrons, if you will to Harlem Liberation School. So it's, to me, it just says that we learn and we teach each other constantly. I'm still learning things. I'm listening to Shannon, you know, laughing part of his time with some of your commentary <laughs> and learning myself. Never too old to learn and, and to recalibrate some things and stuff like that. So really want to thank you again. Sister Najib, we need to see you on the next show. We got to get y'all out here, all right? Hope That's going to be serious. Yo, when you have my sister Jem on this program, it's going to be serious. It's going to be all the way live? All the way live because it's going to bring home all of these politics around our condition and understanding how we're all in the swamp. Mm, that's for sure. And swamp is a a very liberal way of putting it. <laughs> it 
some of us would say a pile of shit that we need to dig out of immediately. Family, Raphael Justin, we see you. Pop Style J, we see you. Sister Ann Jeffries, I agree with you. Can't wait for this epidemic to go down so we can get that brick and mortar situation back. We got to step up our efforts in, in all respects. Uh, family, thank you, Sister Shannon, once again. Um, family, as we, hold on one second. We want to thank our dear sister, uh, Shannon Lane, for making time and space for us. People are busy, family. And we can't assume that they have time to just jump on our platform. And people, when they jump on our platform, they're taking away from something else they have to do. So they are making a sacrifice. Um, I want to thank everybody for coming out. I want to make sure that you stay abreast of what we're doing, Harlem Liberation School Online, first and third Saturday of every month, 12 noon to 1.30 p.m. Eastern time. And uh, the next time that we meet, family, which I believe will be on the 20th, of uh, March, we will have from the DMV area, that's DC, Maryland, Virginia, the sort of modern day sweet honey in the rock called Liberated Muse uh, will be uh, giving us kind of a performance <clears throat> slash discussing political issues, song, poetry, all that's politically uh, motivated and inspiring. We hope you will join us. Thank you again, family. And as always, I'm gonna leave you with these three words. Despite what the crackers say in their white or uh, corporate controlled media, despite what the, the black coons say, the Negro peons, despite what the Negro collaborators say, if we organize, if we believe in ourselves, if we go back and fetch our history, bring it back to the present, tweak it to make it relevant for now, and we love hard on our people, despite our bullshit and our frailties and, and our division, we will win. Peace. Black Power Wakusu. Free the land, family. See you next time when Harlem Liberation is going on. Peace. Wakusu. Wakusu. That's what's up. <laughs>